stewardship is not an exhibition of the moment. No, 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 no. Stewardship is a lifestyle. The truth is, however, that when we have returned our tithe and offerings, our stewardship has only begun. It is not a matter of paying our dues and then living the rest of our lives for ourselves. Stewardship reminds us that everything we are and everything we have belongs to God. God is the one who invites us to enter into an intimate partnership with Him, to let Him be Lord of our lives. As someone said, if He is not Lord of all, can He really be Lord at all? Thus stewardship becomes a lifestyle that involves submitting ourselves completely and entirely to God as an act of heartfelt worship. All this is a privilege given to us actually by God to nurture a life that is integrated in Him. Stewardship becomes the practice of God's presence in all that we do. From slaves to sin, God lifts us to be partners with the divine. Stewards managing his affairs on earth. What a responsibility. Now the difficulty with a sense of responsibility as a motive in Christian stewardship is the fact that it is not distinctively Christian. Any political party can use this type of motivation. Since you belong to the party, therefore you are under obligation to meet the expenses of the party. Any non-Christian group can use this type of motivation. Responsibility therefore is not in the truest sense, in its purest sense, a Christian motivation. The true Christian motive in stewardship is something that is totally different. It does not concern itself with what others are doing or not doing. It does not operate only in the presence of an existing need. The true motive in Christian stewardship is gratitude. And gratitude is our response to the daily manifestations of God's love for us. The heart that senses the goodness of God spontaneously cries out, What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I like the following words. True Christian benevolence springs from the principle of grateful love. Love to Christ cannot exist without corresponding love to those whom he came in the world to redeem and to save. Love to Christ must be the ruling principle of the being, controlling all the emotions and directing all the energies. Redeeming love should awaken all the tender affection and self-sacrificing devotion that can possibly exist in the heart of man. When this is the case, no heart-stirring appeals will be needed to break through their selfishness and awaken their dormant sympathies, to call forth benevolent offerings for the precious cause of truth. I read this in Testimonies, Volume 3, page 396. Thank you for watching. I hope you were blessed. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. Give this video a thumbs up and share with your friends and family. Please visit our website and register for a free faith building course that appeals to you. Until next time, thank you and God bless.